A few weeks back, I had the pleasure of speaking with an incredible individual, Reggie from the Reggie Collects YouTube channel, where I was invited on to discuss arguably one of the most controversial topics surrounding our comic book industry right now, and that is the topic of woke ideology and how it is portrayed in comic books. I was extremely humbled to be given this opportunity to discuss such a heavy and honestly divisive topic. But thanks to Reggie and his incredible wisdom, composure, and overall kindness, we both were able to have a well thought out and compassionate conversation about this thing that seems to create so much hatred within the comic book fandom. Because of the positive feedback from the fans, I decided to reach out to Reggie again to ask if he would be all right with me posting our discussion on my channel as well, to which he replied with a resounding yes, because our purpose for this video was to create discussion, and hopefully that's what I can do here. So without further ado, here is our conversation. Uh, we are going to spend some time talking about this idea that the, the woke mindset is actually leading to the demise potentially of DC Comics and also potentially comics as a whole. And so I, I like to have conversations with people, right? Like I, I like to seek to understand people's points of view. And so I put up a series of posts on the Instagram like, hey, this is something that I've been hearing out there. Like who, you know, who can enlighten me on some of this, right? And, and I had several people reach out that attempted to explain the point of view to me, but they didn't necessarily fully appreciate the point of view so that it wasn't they were like trying to explain someone else's perspective and i wanted to talk to someone that actually had this perspective if you will and could help me to peel back the layers of the onion to understand it a little more and so i found a guest that put his hand up he reached out to me we spoke for i think about 40 minutes or so could have been 30 i i, I was having such a good conversation i was engrossed uh it, it felt like 30 could have been 40 i don't know uh, but i had a conversation and at the end of this conversation, I was like, I would like for you to come on the show so we can spend some more time talking about this. Because again, I think that conversations are important. I think that we as a comic book community should be able to have different points of view. We should be able to discuss those points of view and we should be able to like walk away from those conversations, maybe maybe a little more enlightened as a result of having taken the time to, to understand someone else's point of view. And so to this point with that big wind, up with that big wind up i want to welcome to the show my man max how you doing brother how's it going man can uh, can you guys hear me all right yes we can hear you and and max i'll be honest with you man i i don't like people that come on the show that have good voices you know i don't oh, know <laughs> not to have a good voice that way my voice stands out a little bit better so you know what know uh i don't know if you're uh, back okay i don't know if you're coming back I, I can understand that, and I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm I'm thankful that you would have me on at least for one time. You know, at least for today. So, yeah, this is uh, your one shot. You better do good because this is it. Okay. So you know. so Max, I, I first want to thank you, brother, for agreeing to come on the show and to have the conversation with me. This is not an easy topic to talk about. But yeah. we are going to endeavor to do it. So I, I wanted to start off with with a note of thanks before we got going. No, of course, man. And and I want to echo that sentiment and say thank you as well, because as your chat knows, as your fans know, your viewers, you and I both know, the topic of conversation has become so touchy that even if you are portraying it in a negative or positive fashion, it's something that's so polarizing that people tend to maybe turn their 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 ears off to the to the topic at hand just because they don't want to indulge in it um so I, I really appreciate what you're doing here because i think this stuff is important and just to kind of have these conversations um bring things to light that maybe um you know others may not have the opportunity to hear so yep. um yeah man I, I greatly appreciate it um and real quick i i won't i can't take credit for the uh the post that you put up i because you said that i had raised my hand and, and the only reason why i did was because uh an incredible gentleman ken over at expedition comics on instagram um a huge uh positive influence in the comic book community and and family um actually reached out to me and, and he said hey brother i would love it if you could 
have a conversation and see what you guys come up with. And, and here we are. So, um, Ken, I, I really want to thank you for putting this thing together because uh, Reggie's an incredible dude, and, and I'm just very thankful to uh, be be friends with with both of you guys talking about this thing. So, shout out to Ken, man. Shout out yeah. to Ken for making that magic happen. So, um, to, to the point of people turning off their ears because from whatever side you hear it, people are like, eh, eh, I don't want any part of it. People stop listening. So one of the first things that I wanted to do as, as a person and the first thing that I want to do in this conversation is I wanted to throw out the definition of what woke is. And mm -hmm. on the other side of that, I want to get your reaction to the definition that I actually found online. So the definition that I was able to find, woke means to be alert to injustices in society, especially racism. So Max, MVP. As you hear that definition, what comes to mind for you, right? So be alert to injustices in society, especially racism. Um, first thing that comes to my mind, common human dignity, you know, uh, basic human decency to other humans is to be aware of your social surroundings, to be aware of the, uh, the climate that you're in, you know, for us, we're, we're in the U S and so I think it, it is part of our duty to understand the um, the social issues, the political issues that are going on within within our country. Um, you know, I, I spoke to you briefly. Uh, I served as a U.S. Marine for, for four years and, and recently got out. And a lot of what we were doing, we had to be on alert. We were getting briefs every single week on what is going on with the tactical situation? How are we going to handle this stuff? But with this, when it comes to things like racism or uh, sexism or, or bigotry, it's I feel like it's common human decency to be aware of that and to be compassionate and patient and kind towards those things. So in and of itself, with that definition, um, Reggie, I, I don't think woke is necessarily was meant to be a corrupt thing that has been kind of perverted at this point in time yep um and, and I, I think we're going to get yeah. into potentially that maybe that perversion right as we mm. work our way through this conversation yeah. um but one one of the things that i want to highlight is that because of that definition because of to your point woke to some degree is about basic decency mm. right being considerate of other people that are around you that doesn't sound like a bad thing right mm -hmm. so when people are anti-woke I, I don't know if that's the proper term but but against what has you know been defined as woke in in the, the world um being against woke the way that it's being defined by others doesn't necessarily mean that you are for racism because that's what a lot of people think right if you're like woke is bad people are like well you're a racist that's not necessarily true, right? Right. Um, th those who speak against the, <clears throat> excuse me, woke mindset aren't saying that they're pro-racism. Um, and I think, like you said, that that is a basic assumption for a lot of people is that's instantly where their mind goes to. But um, if we're talking about what woke has become, and, and I don't know if you want to get into that. Go for it. Right now. Um, I think it has become kind of an, an angry association of people that are trying to like cancel uh, or shut up anyone who's not in line with a political affiliation or a belief system. Um, just because you are not like me, I do not want to listen to you. You, you, so you if you are bad. Correct. Yeah. Right. And so so there's the that thing, automatic thing. Yeah. One of the things that was interesting is when I found the definition of woke, you know, anytime you look up a word, they give you a sentence to understand the word mm -hmm. and, and the sentence that came with woke was like something to the, and I, and I forgot to write it down, but it was something to the effect of, uh, be angry and be woke. And I'm like, well, why do you have to be angry Wait a second. <laughs> to, to be aware of injustices? Can't you just be alert to injustices and say, Hey, right. that's not right. So why did, why does it automatically go to anger? So yeah. ev even the way that it was being defined and then used was very interesting in my mind, you know, that um, really is so, so interesting. I, and, and yeah, it is, you know, it's upsetting and it's frustrating for those who aren't, who are trying to spread 
uh, positivity through a woke mindset yep. for because now it's associated because like you said of that definition is saying to be so angry and to also be you know it's it's kind of like it's counterproductive i feel like you, you don't have to be angry to be aware of injustices absolutely you, you can absolutely. address injustices without being angry you know yeah. what i'm saying I mean, or you could just be angry which is like counterproductive in general right yeah. um but one of the things that i want to do is so so oftentimes people um are defined by what they are against and so i want to throw out a couple of things and i want to see if you are against these things okay and it's like you're going to not rapid fire but like you know medium fire okay so are you against diversity in comics no are you against black brown or asian people being represented in comics no are you against gender diversity in comics not at all are you against sexual orientation diversity in comics no okay so my problem now of course, <laughs> is that you're not against any of the things that people would assume that you might be against Correct. Right. As someone that pushes back against this this woke mindset, if you will. So uh, the the challenge is, you know, how do we how do we reconcile some of that stuff? Right. So how, what is your issue if you wanted to encapsulate it with the woke mindset, not the definition, but the woke mindset that has become mm -hmm. a little pervasive? if you're not against diversity really in any shape or form go yeah. ahead so um real quick and and just so that i don't uh um i don't slur my words or sound like i'm out of turn or anything i did write a few notes down just so that i could have things kind of um organized so that you know pe people know that i'm just not kind of trying blow stuff out my rear end, but that I've actually taken the time to think about this and say, you know, what, let, let's let's take a step back and let's like look at this. Let's put words on paper to actually, you know, think about this. And so there are three things that I have issues with for me mainly. Yep. And of course, this is all subjective. You know, this is just my opinion. Um, but basically what what began and what I started to see uh, when I got out of the Marine Corps is I, I came back into comic books. Uh, I came back into the hobby and I really started delving into these stories. Um, and for some reason, it just didn't seem like what it was when I was initially reading it before I, had, I joined the Marine Corps. Um, it seemed like there were these like pseudo moralistic values and virtue signaling that tended to be pushed upon readers. Um, and the mainstream comic book like professionals turned towards a very like politically biased activism instead of art you know mm -hmm. instead of creativity um and it became this overemphasis of like gender race and sexuality of the characters by deconstructing legacy characters um and then the political and economic and social issues then like shoved down the throats of fans through the stories with no kind of respect or reverence towards these characters so that really kind of what what was the initial um push for me to see that i had some concerns and i had some criticisms about the where things were going and that's where i got to the weaponization of my concerns i was seeing that because i was having doubts or because i was asking questions about you know hey where um you know where did thor go um okay it's it's uh, it's jane foster okay that, that could be cool so is she like valkyrie Oh no, she is Thor. So then what's Thor doing? You know, so so I just had these basic questions, but by claiming these these uh these concerns that I had by by you know addressing them, uh it then became a thing where, oh, you're now a racist, a sexist, a bigot. Um, and, and that's immediately said because it causes that divide, it dehumanizes that person and delegitimizes their argument. Um, so that that it becomes like this disingenuous comment and argument because you are no longer a person. You have been dehumanized because you are these you're, things. You're a thing now. You're a thing. Correct. I know yes. I know who you are. I'm going to put you in this box. I've identified you, right? But but your issue isn't the fact that there was a female character. It wasn't the fact that there was a, a strong female character. It was more about 
Um, it, it, well, tell me, tell me specifically what it was about about the Thor switchover that was an issue for you. Yeah, of course. Um, you look at like uh, the defenders uh, mm -hmm. back in like you know classic silver, bronze, uh, copper age like defenders, where it's Hulk, Doctor Strange, Valkyrie, uh, Submariner, and Valkyrie has this beautiful elegance and this strong uh, female presence within the group. You know, she's not a B character in the defender in the defenders. She is a main character there. Um, and she had her own voice. And so what I started to have concerns with was why are we taking legacy characters like, like Thor or like Hulk or, you know, for DC, like Green Lantern or whatnot. And why are we taking them, putting them to the side, deconstructing them in order to raise a platform for a different character who tends to need some sort of agency in a different uniform. Um, so I think you and I had briefly spoken about uh, Falcon, you know, uh, and, and I know I'm kind of bringing up Marvel characters, but I think um, it's just because of Marvel now was the really initial like push into what I was seeing with this yep. uh, back in like the mid 2010s. And um, yeah, we, we saw Falcon put on the Captain America uniform, which is totally fine, but it delegitimized falcon then you know it takes away his agency because let's get a falcon run you know i haven't seen a a solo run of falcon you know 25 plus issues with a great creative team but we have seen you know captain america falcon with a with a uh, a, a series and so i i just i wanted to kind of understand and my questions started to come up of why are we seeing legacy characters being put to the side in order to put up these other characters who already have mantles of their own, who already have very stable, uh, you know, uh, structural integrity to their character and to their history, been around for decades, but for some reason we can't get their books sold because they don't have this certain uniform on. Mm. Um, so that that was, um, a, you know, kind of something that I was wrestling with and and that's when the the weaponization of my concerns started to form because then i was automatically labeled and and then i was pushed pushed to the side just like some of these characters so um, so for so. those that are just tuning in i'm sitting down talking with max that goes by mvp and we are having a conversation about the woke mindset and you know what woke is and and how max is thinking about woke and you know his initial impressions of it and how his thinking has kind of evolved around this idea and he just ticked off one aspect of this that has been problematic for him in, in a series of three things that we're going to talk about and i think we're going to get to mm -hmm. issue number two right now so issue number two for me was the projection of the creators and their own insecurities and biases towards these characters and storylines. Um, the reason why I say that is because fans now seem to get this, uh, this backlash of, like you said, put into a box, we know who you are or what you are, you are not a concern anymore. Um, and what that does is it, like I said before, kind of re-emphasizing it, it dehumanizes that person. But the thing that I had issue with was the fans were never the one ones creating these comics. So if comic professionals now in the modern era have had an issue with the inclusion and diversity of previous years in comic books, they should take issue with previous creators and the industry previously. However, the fans are going to read what they like and they like what they enjoy. Um, you know, Reggie, you and I, have, which by the way, I, I forgot to mention, your background might beat mine. I love your comic collection, man. And thank you, brother. We have put in all this money and all this time and all this passion into this hobby that we love. And then to have a concern and then to automatically then just be dehumanized for it seems a little disingenuous. And I felt like if anyone should be upset, it should be creators and other creators. Why are we getting upset at fans? Because they were reading the, excuse me, the material and we were enjoying it, but we're now the ones being called, you know, this, that, or the other. Mm, so that, that was, I guess if, if that kind of, um, makes sense, you know, there's a, uh, there's a great quote by Larry Hama. Um, he had an interview recently and they put it in the back of uh, one of Marvel's uh, voices like legacy uh, books. 
and he says you know in the in the early 70s he goes in my opinion the comic book industry was pretty damn colorblind they did not care if you were white purple pink brown or chartreuse if you could do the work you were golden and so i loved that depiction of creators being golden you know uh doesn't matter what skin color what sexuality what what gender you are golden if you are doing the work of of storytelling and that's what fans love that's what fans wanted um and so now the in my opinion i feel like the modern creators are saying well no comics weren't good enough back then they weren't diverse they weren't inclusive so now we are telling you what you need to take like mm. intake and read mm. and that that was my other issue and that that's number two i guess that's number two thing. i will yeah. tell you one of the things that i always loved about fitness for example right was was when it came to fitness no one cared what color you were no one cared either you had a good physique or you didn't you had a good physique you won if you didn't you didn't win super simple there was so much people were really colorblind in the world of fitness and i think that that's great and to some degree or another i honestly think that a lot of comic book fans are that way people don't care at least that's my impression people don't care but somehow or another it has really been brought to the forefront and and maybe not in a good way but again that's part of the reason why we are having this conversation again if you are tuning in late i'm having a conversation with mvp and we are talking about the woke mindset he has just ticked off two things that are taking him off when it comes to this woke mindset and we're about to get to the third one right now and i think what's wonderful is you you talked about the weaponization of diversity you are not against mm. diversity but it is the weaponization of diversity that allows a person that asks a question to now be defined as a racist when all they're doing is asking a question about a character that they love that has suddenly been taken away from them and replaced by something else mvp third point so uh before i get to that really quick i want to echo your sentiment again you spoke about bodybuilding and, yep. and in the fitness industry same thing with the marine corps when you get to that boot camp and you are all lined up and you all have those shaved heads and you are getting ready to go through the gauntlet and and earn your you know earn your stripes earn your rank whatever it is earn the title of united states marine no one gives a you know expletive about what you are who you are as long as you got the the back of your brother or sister next to you that's all they want that's, that's all what they i was care about, about to say you're all brothers yeah. you're yes. all brothers no yeah. one cares let's get yeah. it done let's 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 live let's survive let's make it to the next day right yeah. that's what it's about so thank you for echoing that because i think that again it, it continues to explain who you are right and mm. and you're not a racist <laughs> even though you ask questions and justifiably so right so let's be super clear about that so i think again your your background as as a division one football player as a marine all of these things i think are important because again when you're when you're playing sports when no one cares no one cares did you miss the tackle did you score the touchdown or not super simple all right third point we ready for this now absolutely yeah let's do it sorry brother so yeah third, good, point, brother. third point super simple i i just think uh, the whole thing is in in one word demeaning. I think uh, two people of of color of of different sexualities of of different genders, it's demeaning to to put them on a pedestal for financial gain. Um, and I think that is what I see. And and of course, like I said at the beginning of of the interview, this is subjective, and this is just what I, I'm seeing. And and Chad, if you guys um, you know echo that sentiment as well, uh, everyone is is allowed to their own opinion because that's what makes these conversations great. Yep. But in my opinion, I see uh, corporations cashing in on political intrigue, on social issues, and they're gaining financial, uh, uh, you know, it, it, like they're gaining these these finances because of their promotion of these new characters or this new woke ideology um and to me it's disingenuous and it's it's demeaning towards the characters towards the creators towards people that are on the fringes of society or on the margins of society 
If you really want to represent those people, you're not going to do it for financial gain. It's because you actually care. And, and we, I, we, we, we may right. actually talk about that a little bit later that I want to kind of maybe end on that note. But I yeah. saw a comment here as I looked over. Uh, somebody says this guy has a resume. There is a reason why this guy is on the show. There's a legitimate reason. <laughs> like I can have a civil conversation with this guy. He has credibility. He has two legs to stand on. And I appreciate the point of view. Right. So so somebody in the comment section threw out something that I want to get your opinion of. Yeah. You spoke about the fact of of Falcon throwing off his own mantle and assuming the mantle of of Cap. And potentially mm -hmm. that was disingenuous. Potentially that was done for financial gain. Potentially they didn't need to do that. They could have just maybe done some other things. But right. Bucky, Bucky was also cap. Do you feel the same way about the Bucky cap switch as you do the Falcon cap switch? That's a great question. I honestly, I think that any type of tokenization of a character, whether it's a gender swap or a, a race swap or just a person, a, a swap of a person. It's like putting me in a Wolverine outfit. I don't belong there. I don't fit there. Um, I think what uh, Ed Brubaker did with that story on Bucky and Cap uh, was something that I don't think a lot of other writers could have done, um, which is subvert well, not necessarily subvert, but um, give Bucky that mantle of Cap. Um, and I, th I think the difference is that, you know, Bucky was always the sidekick, but never really had his own, you know, he's always kind of a kid mm. um, it, it, from what I remember reading. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. you know, I, I'm not a, uh, an expert on, on Bucky at all. Um, so then to see him kind of get the, the mantle of Cap might have been for fans this kind of like oh a coming of age story like, like um, robin like robin becoming batman that, correct. that's that's kind of what i'm hearing okay it was like a progression you know he's the sidekick to cap uh and and then takes up the mantle or whatever and falcon had already established his character as falcon you know mm. you saw the red and the white and the and the large wingspan flying over the cities and you're going wow that's cool um, and he didn't need Cap's suit, I guess. Um, but that's a great question. Uh, I think that's kind of how I would equate it to. Um, but uh, honestly, I I tend to dislike any, like even when um, I'm trying to think, like of course the Green Lantern core is different because like there you can have aliens, you can have different races, you could have different beings. You know, they have a Green Lantern that's a planet. You know, like that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. So I love the Green Lantern Corps because you can do all sorts of things with with the uh, how many people are and things are in that universe. But like, for your, you know, Silver Surfer should always be Norrin Rad. Mm. Um, Wolverine should always be Logan. Superman should always be Clark Kent. If we're talking multiverses and stuff, fine, go crazy. But structural to the continuity of the character and to the fans, I think those people should stay with that uniform, you know, and then create out of that. Um, you know, Miles Morales is a, an incredible example of what you can do by kind of taking that mantle of Spider-Man, putting it in a different universe and having fans flock to Miles, you know, he's a huge influential modern character um, who is Spider-Man, but he's not Peter Parker. And yeah. those are the like you know that that's that's kind of the the, the difference. And I might have just totally uh, that might have really gotten people upset. I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I, I I enjoyed the explanation that you provided, okay. right? Because the the whole Bucky to Cap thing that actually makes sense to me, right? And, and the deli like a lot of people push back against Miles Morales saying that he was replacing Peter Parker, where technically he wasn't replacing Peter Parker, right? He mm -hmm. was from uh, another universe, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he is of himself a spider character that is incredibly dope. Like a lot of people that spoke out against Miles Morales never read Miles Morales. If you read it, it's actually really good. And and my son, who is biracial, has a wonderful collection of Miles Morales sitting over here to the left because I think that his his bi biracial nature will potentially resonate with my boy when he recognizes that he's actually biracial. Like he's only seven, so he doesn't fully appreciate that yet. But <laughs> the time is coming, and and I think that that the Miles character may actually resonate with him. 
Now, one of the Absolutely. things I will say to you is, is, is I, th- I personally think that you have a, a sensible and thought out logic to the way that you feel the way that you do. Do you think that, that your point of view, your perspective is typical for those that push back against the woke mindset, or are you atypical for those that push back? Because again, I haven't spoken to a ton of people about this. A lot, a lot of people will put their hand up and have the conversation. So I have to ask you as someone that, that creates content that speaks to some of this, what is your thought? Um, that man, that's such a great question. And just, uh, an excellent representation of, um, why I'm so thankful to be talking with you right now, man. Cause that like the, the, those kind of questions are like what really generate this type of like, uh, brotherhood and sisterhood through, through this comic book family. So I, I really appreciate the the conversation. Um, I get excited when like, you know, you have good questions like that. Um, so I, I do think it's a bit atypical at first. I don't think it was at first. I think people had these questions and it was fine. And they were kind of just kind of wondering what the idea, but now the anti-woke mob has also become an echo chamber in itself. Mm. So now we're getting this whole other fringe, you know, minor people who um are very loud and they're going uh they're saying the the typical go woke go broke thing but tell me your experiences where have you seen you know uh storylines go woke and go go broke and then they go well uh it's because of kelly sudaconic and they pull the clip from kelly sudaconic saying this one thing and you go is it the x-men versus x something was that her uh, she was, she did Aquaman for a little while. Oh, uh, she was good, the one completely different person. Then. <laughs> okay. All right. There, there are plenty of creators that people will pull from and, and go, um, you know, uh, they'll, they'll say, sorry, I was, I was reading someone in the, in the chat that I, I Don't might read uh, the chat. Focus on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, everyone's got some really good comments here. Um, so yeah, essentially, um, I, I think that there are a lot of people that uh, are are being very loud and, and angry and outraged and blah, blah, which is fine because they're also vocalizing their concerns. But when it's said in a way that is not conversational, when people don't want to have these types of conversations, um, that's where I go, man, man, am I like milk toast here? Or I'm like, or am I, am I wrong? Am I middle of the road? Because I, I feel like what when i try and have these conversations with people i feel like i'm coming at it from a a logical stance and and you know just saying hey this is just my opinion and yet i get tons of backlash and outrage and i'm like man so i can't find either one i'm not woke enough or i'm too you know it's like it's i I can't i can't find a a middle ground so um it's very interesting I, i think the extremes in my in my mind are always rough and it doesn't matter what the extremes are right mm. it, it, the extremes are always very loud uh very mm. opinionated and sometimes the most uh uninformed right and yeah. i say that because oftentimes they they read a headline and the headline becomes the entire story yeah when the headline is being written by a journalist to capture your attention, because that's what we do, right? That's what I was trained as a journalist to do is to capture somebody's attention in order to tell them a story, right? People could have looked at the thumbnail for this video and assumed that we were going to go in one direction when we, I think, are kind of sort of going right down the middle of exploring what this stuff means. The goal is to capture the attention and then deliver something. Would, Would you agree, though, that potentially people are not completely as informed as they should be yet tend to be very vocal about their thoughts on both sides of the argument oh absolutely um there's a sense of belonging i think that people tend to feel when they are on one side of the aisle or the other they Mm. feel that they're heard they feel Mm. understood they feel connected um because everyone is echoing that same you know, sentiment and they're still, uh, they're all talking about the same thing and they're all just kind of miring in this like thing that is like, yeah, I hate that too. Well, I hate that too. And then it just becomes this big circle of, of, uh, like I said, a, a big echo chamber. And, uh, and like you said, you get that on both sides and then that doesn't open itself up for conversation because when, then once they've closed themselves off to let's just listen to ourselves, 
and someone comes in and go, hey, you know, I actually have an opinion on that. On both sides, they'll go, nope, we don't want to hear it. We've already got our our little, you know, thing going on here. We feel good here. We feel safe. We're not going to kind of open this up for discussion anymore, you know. Um, and that's, you know, that that's dangerous. Uh, I, I remember one of my good, yeah, one of my good friends, um, he's a, a, an award-winning uh, comic book writer and editor, just came out with a, a great graphic novel this year uh, published by Mad Cave. And he, he and I were having a conversation and I told him, I said, man, I just read this comic and I'm so mad, blah, blah. And I'm telling him how they deliberately did all this. And he comes back at me and he goes, hey, I understand where you're coming from. What if you looked at it kind of like this? Mm. And mm. totally diffused my my anger and my my frustration. And he goes, "What if that writer doesn't really know anything other than this? Yep. This is what he sees on the news. This is what he sees in in the media. And so he's going to portray you as that type of person uh, un- unconsciously. That's going to be his his thing in the comic. And I had to look at it, and I was like." dang it you know like yeah you're right man you're, you're right and and it, it totally diffused the, the the situation the conversation and it made me realize you know a lot of this stuff maybe isn't intentional or deliberate but some of it is just people's own biases or or maybe uh i hate to say it but um negligence or incompetence at, at or some lazy or they're yes. just super yeah. lazy but super but the, the lazy, thing yeah. is i think that what you just demonstrated there is is an open mindset a willingness mm-hmm. to hear a different point of view and to believe that you might actually be wrong or somebody else also has a valid point just as valid as your own right but if mm-hmm. you're not receptive to that but but to the point there 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 are many out there that believe that that this woke mindset is a purposeful, potentially malicious thing that is being done by like DC Comics, for example, Mm -hmm. right? To your last point, is your belief that what is happening uh, a deliberate act to destroy DC Comics? Because that's essentially what people are saying. Like they are Mm -hmm. doing this on purpose in order to destroy DC Comics. Do, do you subscribe to that thinking? And if not, then what is your thinking around what is happening specifically at DC? Yeah, I think there are two answers to this. The first one is, and I, I think you and I briefly spoke about this the other day, but there's no way that DC is purposefully trying to implode in on it on itself because like- What company does that? Yeah, like <laughs> to be fair, like, they, these guys want money too. You know what I mean? These guys want careers too. They they want a nice house, a nice car. They want to support for their family. They got to get- Jim Lee's got a lot of kids, brother. Could you imagine Jim Lee being sitting at the table on Monday? Jim, yeah. <laughs> we are about to tank this company. Let's take it down. I don't like exactly. food. I don't like nice stuff. We're going to no. take it down and ride yeah. it to the bottom. Who does that? But that's what people believe, right? Mm-hmm. So, but continue with your thought. I had to, I had to talk about Jim Lee. I try to mention him whenever I can, Jim Lee. Absolutely. Yeah. And it is funny because, you know, people would say, oh, well, Dan Didio tried to do that. And that's why they got rid of him or whatever. And a whole nother conversation. But the second part to what I was going to say is essentially uh, the first part being, no, I don't think they're intentionally trying to take down DC Comics because everyone wants to profit off of their their work, you know. Um, second being, though, there are times where I, I can honestly say that I have felt where I've read something, whew, man, that felt intentional. And uh, that is my own, you know, th- that that is some my own opinion that I've read in in a book where I've got when I where I've said ah that didn't feel right or that read weird or that character seemed off and um obviously I've I've looked into it more because if I just read it at face value of course I'm gonna go oh well this was intentional but like I said after having conversations with friends you kind of open your mindset up but there are some creators who tend to be a bit divisive um a bit too on the nose with their writing and that i think tends to be intentional Mm. uh so writers i think tend to do that editorial uh corporate they they need that money coming in you know what i mean so you know i i think that's where the juxtaposition comes from uh, and that's 
kind of why I answered in, in two parts of that. No, it's a, it's a good question. And someone just asked a question here a second ago and they were, and the question was, you know, who are they writing these comics for? So to that point, mm. do, do you think that what they are attempting to do? And I, and I think uh, Jim Lee spoke about like this whole diversity angle before, and it almost seems like what they want to do is to try to create some characters for specific groups of people out there with the hope that these characters will resonate with with those groups of people um is that okay is it okay that they create these characters specifically for a, a small group of people versus the masses like your batman your your superman your spider-man they may be the masses but there could be this this unique character where they're like you know what this is an underrepresented group of people let's create something for them is that wrong is that bad what are your thoughts no, not at all. And and this kind of um, goes back to our original point of, is the idea of diversity and inclusion in comic books wrong? No, not at all. If you And if people think that, then there's some stuff internally that you got to deal with, you know? So inherently, at its core, diversity and inclusion and writing these stories for these people who may not have that uh, in mainstream comics or mainstream media, I don't think is a bad thing. When it becomes the sole purpose of a story or when it becomes a sole purpose of a character, that's when it loses its creative integrity. Um, it, it, you know, it deconstructs the basic structural integrity of that character um, or that character arc um, by suddenly doing something that changes the entire uh, like history of that character. And then it's also kind of mixed with that virtue signaling and, and weaponization of, of the fans' concerns that we had spoken about earlier. And um, I, I think all of that plays into it. But, you know, when, because people will say, well, Max, you're you're represented in every book. You've got Superman, Wolverine, Batman. You know, you're, you're a white straight male. You've got every single book. Now it's time to get some representation. You know, now, now that you've had your time, it's time for the other, you know, the other representation for everyone else. And that sounds like a power dynamic, mm. you know, when it's, when it's like, well, it's not your turn anymore. It's our turn to have the, this comic book community uh, or the, or this family. And that's being, that's not being inclusive. Cause if you are truly a hundred percent inclusive and diverse of everyone, then that means diversity of thought and mm. diversity of um, experiences and backgrounds. Mm. And you can get that from people who have white skin or who are straight. Um, and so I think with more recent comic books, the main way that they want to try and push diversity is let's make these legacy characters, these main characters, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, let's make them the diverse characters now. Um, you know, to kind of equalize that power yeah. balance. Yeah. But I, I don't know if it's that simple. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I guess if that makes kind one of sense. the things that you mentioned when we spoke on the phone, um, it, well, whatever we spoke, Instagram, we spoke on Instagram. Somebody asked what my preferred platform was. It's like Instagram. Cause I can have wonderful conversations. Uh, a shout out to Brandon for the super chat. I definitely appreciate that brother. Um, was you, you spoke about earlier in this conversation and that conversation was, um lazy writing mm. might be the culprit right lazy editors not necessarily paying attention to what writers are be are, are saying and and what artists are actually drawing so talk with me a little bit about potentially what publishers should be doing and, and you've spoken about it already but i want to kind of encapsulate it if they shouldn't be doing gender swaps and, and other just, you know, replacements, what should they be doing? Let, let's end this thing on a, on a little bit of a positive note, if you will, with some, some positive uh, feedback for those that may be listening, watching, etc. Absolutely, man. Um, the, the first thing I'll, I'll say is I'll, I'll mention a, a quote from Stan that I had written down here and I was like, Man, this just hits home. And I always love reading this quote because it just speaks to why I've always enjoyed comic books and, and why I think uh, this this medium is, is one of the best storytelling mediums ever. But uh, there's a, a great AMC interview that Stan does. If, if uh, you're viewing this right now in chat or if you guys uh, view this later, 
uh, definitely go check out the interview of Stan Lee discussing the creation of the X-Men. Uh, he's interviewed by AMC and they talk about social issues, you know, because a lot of people have uh, equated X-Men with civil rights movement or whatnot. And Stan blatantly and outright says, social issues, I try to get in in the background or underlying the plot, but never to the point of letting it interfere with the story or hitting the reader over the head. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why X-Men were so beautiful because uh, you've got Nightcrawler who has a Catholic faith base to him, you know, and so maybe some people can relate to that, but it's not, you know, Nightcrawler isn't only his faith. Um, and then you've got Storm, you know, who led the X-Men as a black female character. Where is her solo book? You know, like, let's see a solo book of, of Storm and, an, and a, let's put a, a kick-ass uh, writing team and an artist team on that. And let's have a Storm book, you know, or, or an X-Men book where Storm leads the X-Men again. Um, and Storm wasn't just the, uh, her character wasn't just oh, here's my skin color. That's it. And that's that's the, because there's no depth to that. Yep. Storm has this uh, fear of being enclosed, you know, because she rages the, the winds and the tides and the weather. And so she needs to be free. And there's this fear of, of being too uh, conformed in a box and, and all this stuff. So there's so much more to her character than just, here's my race. skin. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So um, I, I guess to Stanley's quote of saying, you know, we we need to, you know, if politics are in a book, we can't be having that be the main factor. Um, I think we need to start seeing characters come out like like Midnighter, like Jon Stewart, Vixen, Yara Floor, who just had her series canceled by DC, um, Alan Scott, Green Lantern. We need to have their own monthly book with a, like I said, with a kick-ass writing team, a great uh, artist, and we need their stories now. Mm. Um, right now, DC is doing uh, variant covers for uh, Black History Month. C come on, DC. You guys, you guys need, we don't need variant covers. We need storylines of Jon Stewart going through because john stewart is also a marine so that was why he was a huge influence on me as a marine yep. and a lot of my other marines love john stewart because semper fi you know he was one of you guys yeah exactly yeah and his character comes from honor courage and commitment which are the three core values of the marine corps mm. so it wasn't oh i identify with him because of his skin color i identified him with because his character is honor courage and commitment and that's what he brought into the Green Lantern Corps. So let's see him take some of his tactics from the from the Marine Corps, implement that in the Green Lantern Corps. What happens in the in in the galaxy as he's protecting mm -hmm. uh, Sector uh, Two Eight One Four? You know, how does that weigh on him uh, as as a character, um, as as a leader of of the Green Lanterns? You know, so with those characters, I think we need to see more storylines not just variant covers, not just one shots, not just, hey, we'll throw you this, we'll throw you that. I would love to see beautiful storylines told of, of all these characters. Yep. Um, and then the second thing being, um, or I guess the third, I'm not sure which one I'm it's on. It's third. Now. Yeah, cool. okay, well thank you. I'm keeping um, track. Okay, I appreciate it. Um, is uh, new characters and not, not, hey, let's get uh, Wolverine number four or let's get like you know another green lantern or let's give a sibling to this character or another bat family member i'm talking like holy original mm. um i think that would really give some agency to any type of person who feels like they are marginalized um if they came out with a character that had his own his or her own name his own his or her own, maybe not necessarily universe, but kind of uh, characteristics, uh, plot line, and just created from new, N new uniform, didn't have to conform to the Superman logo or the Spider-Man logo, his own thing, that would be cool. I mean, you look at uh, Wolverine, Wolverine was uh, 
wasn't really technically a modern character because when you think of his creation i don't think he got his first solo series until the late 80s yeah um yeah. and so you know wolverine was a wholly new idea as part of the x-men and people were like i'm on board with this thing you got um, it you got it Bo. so i think yeah right? he's the best at what he, what he does and um so i think that that would be my final kind of like closing statements on this whole thing is i would love to see those implemented into dc now um stanley's quote uh these beautiful storylines told of legacy characters that are already there in the history and new characters that have their own agency that don't need the mantle of a different superhero max i want to thank you brother for for agreeing to come on and i think doing a, a fantastic job of helping us to to understand uh the point of view right because i think it is important as i mentioned before for us to be able to to pause and to have these conversations in a civil manner and, and as i look at the chat this the chat has also been very civil so i definitely appreciate that shout out to the blue wrenches that are in there doing what they do so i i appreciate uh, your service as well but um mvp where can people get a hold of you because you have a youtube channel and that youtube channel is full of in my opinion, like, I think well thought out videos that are way more polished than your, your <laughs> six months in the YouTube content creation sphere. So, so hats off to that. Um, but where can people find you on the social media? Thanks, man. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, this YouTube thing has been so much fun de delving into one of my passions my hobbies of you know uh, of comics and uh it's been really cool to have this shift from you know active service marine corps to now this um and uh so uh with with that being said you guys can find me uh mvp maxfield von Priestley is my full name um and i mainly do comic books like i said it's my passion um but i also talk about uh, movies, pop culture, anything that's really going on within this industry of kind of nerddom uh, that I think might might be important or might need to be discussed. Um, because like what we just did, Reggie, having these conversations is super important. And so uh, if I think it needs a video to kind of discuss that, I'll throw it up on the channel. So, uh, but yeah, I, I can't thank you enough for, for having me on and, and just wanting to have this conversation because it can be so polarizing at times. And uh, it, it really means a lot that you would take the time out of your day to, to bring me on. So I appreciate brother, it. Brother, I enjoyed the conversation and hopefully the 170 or 80 people that were here enjoyed it as well. Heck so yeah. uh, again, MVP, thank you for coming on. If you guys enjoyed what you heard from Max, I definitely want to encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to his channel. I will reach out to you soon, brother. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more like it, please consider supporting me by subscribing to the channel, sharing it with others, and donating to the Stream Elements link below. Every donation goes right back into the show to provide better material, better and more frequent uploads, and overall just better production value. Another huge thank you to all my fans and subscribers for your constant love and support. I humbly say that I could not do this without you. That's all I have for now, and I will see you guys in the next video.